here are the six action figures that nobody else wanted. Well, apart from me, but then again, you'll know I'll buy anything. And here's uh, number six in that list. It is the figure to the Blair Witch from the Blair Witch Project series of movies. And one thing that this always sticks on my head for, and it's kind of a mind blow for two reasons, was um, it was not long after the Blair Witch Project had come out, and I was having a carpet fitted, and you know you make that normal small talk that normal humans make like, uh, what's the weather like, and uh, what kind of car do you drive, and I've seen the Blair Witch Project, and the guy was talking to me, oh yeah, it's part of the Blair Witch Project, it's good, isn't it? And I was like, oh, I've got a figure of the Blair Witch. He's like, a figure? You don't see the Blair Witch? And then I showed him the figure, and he's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And as you can see on the packaging though, well, and this is a really cool little touch. And I say it's based on something you don't see in the film, which is kind of, how awesome is that? But um, the figure, the face on the figure looks different than the uh, face up there. It's because there was two versions that you could get. That kind of just could trick people's brains a little bit. And I was saying uh, one of my great, awesome Wells type anecdotes, the other thing that blew me away when I was showing you the carpet man, which sounds like code, uh, the carpet man, this figure, uh, there was a horse that lives next to me dad's house and uh, he also knew the name of the horse. Oh, I can't I wonder where he is now. Well, the next figure's coming in. It is from Attack of the Clones. And it is Zet Zakusa, which is weird because I don't remember the name. Oh, I remember this figure as Jet Lucas, George Lucas's son, that bloke who, uh, Met the guy from LA Law just before he got blown away. But can you believe as well how badass is George Lucas? He put his son in the film. His son got shot, but like that one cool enough. The thing I love about um, Jet Lucas in that scene, and it gets me all like emotional, is the he's the last of the younglings for like sort of defend the Jedi Temple. But uh, yeah, old Jet Lucas there. Yeah. Imagine being named Jet and your dad's George Lucas. How cool is that? And uh, talking about how cool um, your dad is, uh, <laughs> me and my dad actually went to see this guy. I can never remember the exact number of greats, but it's uh, John Wayne's great, 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 great nephew, grandson, whatever he is, uh, Tommy Morrison, better known as Tommy the Duke Morrison, or Tommy, Tommy Gun, Tommy the Machine Gun <laughs> from Rocky V. But can you believe, and this is in like the realms of the Matrix or anything like that, but can you believe, in my lifetime, I've actually seen and shook hands with a white heavyweight boxing world champion. Just how crazy is that? Oh, Tommy Morrison. I lent a videotape off him once and uh, talking about uh, things that ruin the uh, movie series. Uh, and, and I'm being a little bit facetious because I absolutely love this film and absolutely love this design. It's Patrick Totopolis's Godzilla 98 from Godzilla 98. What's always really funny about Godzilla because it's probably one of the few uh, film remakes or reboots or reimaginings or whatever you want to call it where it's exactly the same as most of the other films that have preceded it. You know, it's like a, a giant monster that is created from a nuclear explosion and he goes around destroying buildings. And people are like, oh, it, it's ruining the series. And, and that'd be fine if there was like two Godzilla movies, but can you believe there's like about 30 Godzilla movies and there's ones where you've got these twin Asian people that are about two inches tall and you know, you've got Godzilla dancing in one scene, all these different things and that. And th apparently this is the film that ruined the series and not Godzilla 2014, but yeah, Godzilla 98. A cool uh, Puff Daddy song on the soundtrack. Uh, can't say uh, Puff Daddy anymore, he's um, we're just not, not uh, you don't, you're just not knocking around anymore, is he? But uh, talking about people you don't see anymore, he has a, uh, Andrew Devoff, uh, the uh, bloke from Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Strict Crystal Skull, or better known as Wishmaster. And here's the uh, figure from Wishmaster. You've got the old uh, crystal there. And I'm sure I've got this footage somewhere on tape, and I'd love to try to find it if I could. But um, when uh, this uh, new channel in the UK started called Channel 5, that's some kind of showbiz news roundup. They're saying uh, in six months a film's being made with Kane Arda, Robert England, and Tony Todd. It's like, how do we get involved in this? What is this film? And it was Wishmaster. So, as some of also worthy you have noticed, uh, it was uh, on sale. It was 11 99 
and now it's four ninety nine, and uh, this is one. But you can uh, you can decide, viewers, should you leave the prices on packaging, or does it make it look like a loom? And uh, here's um, well, this is a figure I hope to get uh, both in the set uh, to complete my Roy Scheider action figure collection. But this is a uh, Roy Scheider. It's Captain Nathan Bridget from Sequest DSV. And I do genuinely love Sequest DSV. I mean, it's got a talking dolphin in it named Darwin. Stephanie Beecham's in it. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing film. It's uh, used uh, Commodore Amigas to do uh, the special effects and stuff like that. And programs like Sequest, though, it really sticks with me for a lot of reasons that, like, when people complain about like things like, oh, my favorite show's been canceled after eight million episodes. It's like, yeah, Try and be in a Sequest fan where there's like about six episodes. It's like, you know, we can we can all be fans of shows where there's like eight million episodes. And also, what's good about Sequest? It ends with the uh, what's the guy's name? Bob Ballard from the uh, Oceanographics uh, Institute, where it gives you a cool fact about um, Sequest being. I know Sequest might seem futuristic, but this episode was actually based on real life, where Roy Scheider finally got that bigger boat. And don't forget to keep it locked. <laughs>